Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Asad Lalji. Welcome to the NGM and thank you for being with us today. I'd like to congratulate to, uh, all involved with putting up this recent uh, retrospective sh uh, Shakti, a retrospective celebrating Rini Dhumal. I mean, it's such a fantastic show. I don't know if some of you all have had the chance to go see it. I know many of you all were on the walkthrough. <laughs> Women and womanhood have been ubiquitous subjects of, for art in India being represented in various veins from sensual, evocative, powerful to meek. Tonight we are here to discuss strong women artists from modern India and their work, especially female artists like Rani Dhumal, whose work created focus on a wide range of feminine topics, both real and mythological, with a focus of creative possibilities. The National Gallery of Modern Art, Mumbai, Ministry of Culture, Government of India, Kalagarats Association and Avid Learning present Shakti, Women as Power in Indian Art. Our speakers today will dwell into the evolution of the feminine in the art, the importance of feminine perspectives and the power of the female voice. This program is a continuation of Avid's collaboration with the NGMA and I'd like to thank uh, Mrs. Anita Rupa Wataram and her team for partnering with us yet again and also Brinda Miller and the Kalakora Association for their continuous support. Today we have some of the most prolific women artists from various parts of the country who will also share their personal journey and reconcile their experiences with the life and works of Rani Dumal. Some of their works have been shown uh, on the presentation uh, on the screen behind me. I hope you had a chance to see that. With that, I'm going to welcome our speakers for the evening and I'm going to request you to come and take your, your place. Multimedia artist Smriti Dixit. Multidisciplinary contemporary uh, uh, Indian artist Seema Kohli. <laughs> Fine artist Henri Che, Kalagora Association, education consultant at the CSMBS, Mumbai, Brinda Miller. <laughs> Choreographer and director Amara Nitya Kala Hansa, Gauri Sharma Chipati. And they will be in conversation with founder CCB Architects and India House Art Gallery Pune, Ram Prasad Akisethi, who will be moderating this conversation for the evening. So without further ado, let's begin this panel discussion on Shakti, Women as Power in Indian Art. Good evening. Brinda, you are sitting in my space. <laughs> She's already showing the Shakti. <laughs> we, were, we were told by the organizers that I'll be sitting here and then two will be on this side and two on the other side. <laughs> so anyway, so we're going to have fun for the next one hour with a lot of knowledge sharing. And uh, to begin with, let me introduce myself. I'm Ram. I came from Pune just an hour back. and. Uh, I must thank Asad and his team, Avid Learning, for uh, bringing me over here to conduct this panel discussion. Uh, to give a little background, uh, Radhika Dumal, she, uh, she is the, uh, the daughter of Rini Dumal, and Radhika is an architect. I run an architectural firm in Pune, and Radhika is with her husband. Both of them are very dear to us. And uh, I've known Rini for almost as long as I've known Radhika. That's almost for two decades. Yeah, more probably. <laughs> so uh, coming to the point, I think Rini's contribution to the arts world is immeasurable. There's no doubt about that. And the exhibition and the quality of work demonstrates that in every aspect, in the fineness of the subject as well as in the craft of the art. Uh, we have all gathered here to commemorate the life of life and work of Rini Dumal, an exceptional artist and a champion for the cause of women. She came of she came of age during a transformational period in the history of our country, as women pushed for a greater share in our civic and public life. Her artworks mirrored this transition. My muse is woman the Shakti image. This is what Rini said in one of the interviews. One cannot forget that women of on her canvases and Rini's women's women belong to all ages and all races. They were like goddesses who lived by their own spirit and the sense of being. 
This exhibition titled Shakti was laboriously crafted by Rini Dumal and was supposed to be open in 2020. But unfortunately, Rini Dumal unexpectedly departed for her heaven, heavenly abode in September 2021, just almost a year back. Uh, even as all the parties involved in curating and creating this exhibition were planning the show. We believe that this retrospective is the best tribute that we can pay a homage to her. Reflecting on Rini Dumal's work, the panel will highlight the impact of Rini's unique visual grammar that resonated with everyone who engaged with her work. So with this brief introduction, I'm going to uh, divide the panel into panel discussion over five uh, sub-subjects. Uh, I must say, I was given these questions uh, after a huge amount of research. And whoever has done this research, I must say that they've covered everything. And uh, thanks to Avid, they have, uh, they have like put a lot of effort. And uh, this next one hour, I'm sure the, the questions that I'm going to lead into the kind of answers that are going to come from our uh, distinguished panelists is going to summate the entire subject. And it's very important. But I must also tell my panelists that um, each of my subsections, we have 12 minutes, each one of you have to be brief, not more than two minutes. If you exceed two minutes, there will be negative marks. <laughs> Just making fun of it. But uh, yes, we would want to know from each one of you um, your point of view of that particular aspect, what we are going to discuss. Now, uh, let me um, pose this question to all of you. Uh, how is your experience of womanhood, especially in India, that has shaped your relationship with the arts? If I have to ask this question, let me start with you first. Ek, uh, female hone ke karen, apne, uh, experience isi body se dekha hai, is dunya ko bhi isi se dekha hai. Aur apne aspas jo chije hoti hai, wo bhi isi ke through uh, samjhi hai. Lekin maine, ये भी देखा है कि हमारे जो फीमेल होने पे बहुत ज़्यादा सोसाइटी का सोशल और राजनीतिक प्रेशर के कारण कुछ चीजें अजीब ढंग से बदल गई हैं जिसके के लिए मुझे हमेशा लगता है कि ये कब हुआ होगा कैसे हुआ होगा क्यों हुआ होगा क्योंकि मेरे लिए अगर अगर ये फीमेल को नेचर में चूज किया है एक रिप्रोडक्शन के लिए या इसके लिए तो मुझे उसके लिए बहुत गर्व होता है मुझे लगता है कि वो वो एक आइडेंटिटी की बात है लेकिन यहाँ पे बस एक बात ये है जो कि बदल गई है कि जो आप बच्चा है उसको फीमेल के नाम से जाना जाना चाहिए मेल की जगह तो मुझे बाकी किसी चीज से कोई चेंज मैं देखती हूँ लेकिन मैं देखती हूँ कि हमारे फीमेल होने के लिए कोई इसके बारे में बात नहीं करता है अधिकतर बात जो है वो एक हीरो होने की है और वो हीरो जो कि एक हिंसा से भरा हुआ है एक अजीब ढंग से सोसाइटी में चेंज लाने की कोशिश कर रहा है ये जो फीमेल का साधारण होना है जो बहुत उसका अपने आप में उसका साधारण होना बहुत इम्पोर्टेंट है क्योंकि वो आजकल मिसिंग होता जा रहा है मुझे लगता है कि ये सब्जेक्ट भी हमारे कामों में बहुत कम है इनफैक्ट अगर आप हिस्ट्री में भी देखें तो ये चीज़ जो वुमेन हुड की है एक तरह से पूछी हुई है जैसे हमारे यहाँ पर अगर हम अपना लिटरेचर देखें तो जो किताबें हैं उसमें लगातार जो व्यक्ति है वो युद्ध कर रहा है जमीन के लिए लेकिन वहाँ पर इसके इसके बारे में कोई बात ही नहीं है कि खाने में क्या बनता था घर में किस तरह की चीज़ें होती थी किस तरह की चीज़ें सिखाई जाती थी या भगवान राम को ही समझ लीजिए कि क्या पसंद था क्या तबीयत खराब होती तो क्या बनता था क्या तो ये मुझे लगता है ये पॉलिटिकली ये चीज़ें सोसाइटी से हटाई गई इन चीज़ों को बिल्कुल एक ढंग से मिटा दिया गया है 
और इस तरह से एक अजीब ढंग से बातचीत का डायरेक्शन कहीं और चला गया है तो मैं देखती हूँ कि ये चीज मिसिंग है और मैं कोशिश करती हूँ अपने कामों में इन चीजों को उठाने की जो सिंपल बातें हैं जो सिंपल चीजें हैं थैंक यू थैंक यू स्वीटी जी दिस दिस इज़ नॉट वर्किंग हेलो हेलो Yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, let me go to Seema College. What's your opinion? How women has shaped your relationship with your father? So uh, I don't think it has changed anything in my life. That's what it was. For me, art was a communication from me to the. out of world so or yeah it was my expression right from the beginning so i talked about women right from the beginning mm. and it did not change anything but it and it was not a message either right it was something that i saw as myself or what i admired it was an awe it was a situation of awe when i realized and i wanted to talk about women because before that maybe when i was very young i was only trying to portray myself it was not the woman who uh, that must have been very young like 6 7 years or something of age so <laughs> that uh, that was only me that i was probably expressing and it didn't become a political statement for a very long time i don't think it was even now it is i don't consider myself but at the same time yes uh for me this whole idea of womanhood is energy okay it is something like which is constantly collaborating and that it is so magical and i think i see the magic in her i see the awe in her i see everything which i don't have probably in her and that power is what is communicated in my works and that is probably uh, only um, very uh, internal it is not something uh, that i'm trying to fetch from outside it is an very internal experience and it remains an internal experience right. it is 2 minutes is it yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now let me let me uh, ask brinda brinda miller is also associated with architecture Uh, her husband is a very well known architect uh, so brinda what's your take on that so i think i have a very different take because uh, uh, i think i've been empowered from the day i was born so in that sense uh, i think i've been lucky i've always had uh, a lot of support from uh, my father say or my partner my husband and uh, every all my family members have encouraged me so much as a woman artist and um, the way i see it um it's good for us women to have a bit of support it's n- i'm not one of those uh, feminist persons because of that reason is because i've always had uh, a lot of support from everyone in my family and i've never looked at it that way but i do get asked this question a lot so i would say that um, it's good for uh, you know women to be encouraged by men and uh, quite often you know people ask me but sometimes your paintings they could be uh, a man painting them so uh, that's another way i mean i look at them and then i said oh i hope i hope my paintings don't look like feminine or masculine or because i think uh, yeah they are they should be neutral but on the other hand i'm sure there is an element of feminine because i am a woman so after all that that element does creep into my work but uh, let me ask you a, a following question you know uh, how has women's work in visual arts engaged with the traditional male gaze or the male viewer to force a conversation about women's issues i would say thank god for the male gaze mm. because uh, you need the male gaze to make you feel good right. and uh, that's uh, on the other hand i would say as a woman artist i have always painted women mm. when i have painted women now i paint a lot more abstract works but i think uh, 
painting women is because their form is so beautiful and mm. uh, you know the woman is such a beautiful form so mm. yes the male gaze uh, definitely encourages us to uh, you know uh, paint what we do yeah. good, and good. feel inspired gauri you are a dancer kathak dancer very renowned so what's your take on the question well, thank you first of all um, i want to congratulate uh, radhika because i was not exposed to this work and i com recommend everyone to really make the time and go and walk and engage with each and every canvas that rini ji has done while i was walking and that's where i'm going to start my this thing i thought there was so much of vigor unapologetic mm. celebrating the womanhood and that's where i come from mm. i came from a background where my guru is here my mother and it's a lineage of four generation of women doing kathak without an apology and we trained we have worked through it and taking from what rinda ji has just said i believe in the female body is there because that's my instrument that's yeah. my medium but i believe in the whole element of androgyny mm. ardhanarishwar so right. there are moments where i have the shakti roop there are moments when there is a very masculine presence mm -hmm. and when uh, as an artist we transcend not being a male or a female that's mm. where the art is seen mm. uh, and that is where my take on this question is so it's about androgyny it's about ardhanarishwar and we all have both the elements but yes we very are very beautifully put beautiful. beautifully put in fact we are we are celebrating our bodies and that is something which yeah. and just just a little small speck we come from lucknow and in you know, the family grew up my mother started dancing when the dance was not allowed yeah. coming from that generation yeah. and the beautiful support of the family and the male gaze it yeah. is important yeah. it is important in our tumris it is important when we are celebrating krishna at the same time yeah. when we are celebrating the shiva shakti right. we have that androgyny alive in our bodies and as as that, that is my instrument oh, it's, it's am am amazingly i i think correct the way you have portrayed the the question i think it's very very nicely put i must say i mean to continue with that like gauri i need to ask you a following question energy or shakti is considered a crucial aspect of many dance forms how do you incorporate the feminine energy in your performances i mean I, you told about the uh, you know the artanarishwar but we specifically are looking at like are there times when you specifically have to kind of give that female energy the shakti there used to be a time when we were training when we were still young practitioners where we were just working on our tool mm. the grammar of the art form right us samay when we were training the natya shastra kai cheeze thi jo abhinay related thi we had to induce those feelings in right. order to communicate the rasaks rasikas ah. and the audience to understand where we are going right but now you are at a stage where you don't know when you're performing where you transcend oh when you transcend into the feminine energy or the shiva shakti energy that comes because it's no longer about that it's about the narrative which is coming out of the instrument of your body so for me that is now a stage where i don't uh, calculate it and say ab mujhe ye karna hai ab mujhe ye karna hai mm. it just flows and i think shakti just manifests itself right it is not um designed it, it's interchanging time. it's constantly interchanging Changing. and it's there and you know there are moments where i would feel feel yeah. the goosebumps coming in so would the person watching me right right and then you translate and you transcend into a different realm together so i think most of us perhaps because of the experience and staging and the age mm. of the practice right. the riyas that makes us slowly just for flow into a realm and then flow out of it so it's like meditation mm. you don't really see uh you know and you don't uh time it you don't graph it that this is the point i need to do it just right. is allowed to flow in so shakti One, manifests wonderful wonderful, wonderful. different times uh, smriti ji uh, let me ask you one more question in your experiences which led to incorporating the feminine so distinctly into their artworks what's your experience of incorporating the feminine in your artwork jo material main choose karti hu jaise main kapda use karti hu ya price tag clips use karti hu jo ki bahut hi 
या फाउंड ऑब्जेक्ट यूज़ करती हूँ जो कि हमारे आसपास के हैं मैक्सिमम फीमेल जो है आ, मेरे हिसाब से वो अपने आसपास की चीज़ों के साथ में रिएक्ट करने में ज़्यादा कंफर्टेबल होती है वो बहुत जिस इन्वायरमेंट में रहती हैं उसी के साथ में ज़्यादा रिएक्ट करती हैं और इस इस तरह से मैं जब ये जब ये जो मैं मटेरियल यूज़ करती हूँ वो अधिकतर फाउंड ऑब्जेक्ट होते हैं घर में मिलने वाले ऑब्जेक्ट होते हैं या फिर मेरे डेली के जो रूटीन है उस उसमें जब मुझे वो टकराते हैं बार बार तो वो ऑब्जेक्ट होते हैं सब्जेक्ट भी अधिकतर वही होते हैं जो टेक्निक मैं यूज़ करती हूँ निटिंग यूज़ करती हूँ वीविंग यूज़ करती हूँ कॉलिंग यूज़ करती हूँ जो कि बहुत ही फैमिनाइन है मेरे काम में मैं अपने काम को बार बार बना के तोड़ देती हूँ जैसे एक वेब मैंने काम बनाया था तीन बार मैंने उसको तोड़ दिया बनाने के बाद में उसको बनाने में भी बहुत समय लगता है लेकिन मैं बना के तोड़ देती हूँ उस मटेरियल को मैं दोबारा रिसाइकिल करती हूँ तो इस ढंग से मुझे लगता है जो रिसाइकल सस्टेनेबिलिटी इस समय फैशन में है शायद लेकिन ये बहुत ही फीमेल नेचर है और ये मेरे अंदर एक स्वभावता फीमेल होने के कारण है जो कि मैं बहुत शुरुआत से प्रैक्टिस कर रही हूँ मैं एक ही काम में एक एक काम मैंने चालू किया था 2015 में जिसको तोड़ के कम से कम आठ दस बार मैं बना के एग्जिबिट कर चुकी हूँ तो मुझे लगता है कि ये बहुत इम्पॉर्टेंट है आ, कि आप जो भी चीज़ इस्तेमाल कर रही हो कितनी इस्तेमाल कर रही हैं और एक ज़रूरी आर्ट वर्क को बचाना नहीं है ज़रूरी आर्ट प्रैक्टिस को बचाना है रोज काम करने की की जो डिज़ायर है या जो प्रैक्टिस है ये ये बचाना बहुत ज़रूरी है आर्ट वर्क नहीं क्योंकि इतने सारे काम मुझे रोज काम करना पसंद है लेकिन इतने सारे काम हो जाते हैं तो फिर मैं उसके बाद में उनको तो उनको एक मटीरियल की तरह देखती हूँ उनके दोबारा काम करना चाहती हूँ तो right. मुझे लगता है कि इस ढंग से मैं वो फीमेल एनर्जी या फीमेल होना जो है वो उसमें मेरे काम नो आई आई थिंक इट्स अ वेरी वैलिड पॉइंट दैट यू रीयूज एंड रीसाइकल इट्स आल्सो वेरी इंडियन इन द सेंस आई थिंक वी ऑल ग्रो अप या जनरेशन वेयर वी रीसाइकल्ड एवरीथिंग ये फैशन नहीं है बल्कि ये हम लोग का लाइफस्टाइल ही है करेक्ट और मुझे लगता है कि ये बहुत अच्छे ढंग से बचाया हुआ है औरतों ने यस तो वो मेरे काम में बहुत स्वभाव तो है ये अलग बात है कि इस समय वो फैशन में लेकिन वो मेरे साथ में फैशन की तरह या फिर मैं कोई बहुत महान काम कर रही हूँ की तरह नहीं है वो एक जरूरत है वो उतने सारे मटेरियल को रिसाइकल करना मेरी जरूरत है क्योंकि मुझे किसी भी चीज का जरूरत से ज्यादा इस्तेमाल करने से बचना चाहिए सो सीमा जी दिस क्वेश्चन इज टू यू यू सी योर ट्रिस्ट विथ हिरण्य गर्भ और द गोल्डन बोम what this means to you and how it relates to the female shakti of procreation see uh, for me hiranyagarb uh, sort of expanded mm. just the way it's essentially in its nature so uh, for me it is a space through which we all have emerged right uh, you know uh, if we read a lot of scriptures there are different interpretations the interpretation which i like and i like to go with is to see it as surya it is also seen as brahma it is seen as various different things in various scriptures but i see it as surya through which we uh, probably uh, we all have emerged which is constantly cycling recycling recycling positively and for me it is not only a biological hiranyagarbha that i am talking about i am also talking about hiranyagarbha as a space of constant creativity mm. a space which is constantly being created and which is re be reinvented uh, like the space here evolving all the yeah time. it's all evolving. like the space here uh the space where we are all getting new ideas i'm talking you're listening then you will ask me questions so there is a space in between which is the garbh mm. that is the feminine now you know and sorry yeah what were you saying uh, i i think you know like uh the other day i think 2 3 days back this guru ji who was sitting in front of me he was staying with me in pune apparently he has come all the way from delhi and now he is following me to bombay also <laughs> so he was talking to me about garbhagriha it was fascinating how every temple has a garbhagriha sure. and the concept of garbhagriha was like uh, very very important and most of us we just see that is a uh, inner space of the temple but it its metaphorical meaning is like very strong yeah uh, and like how it is the center of energy or shakti yeah and it's not just like a space 
So I see Surya as that feminine, the celebration of that feminine right. energy, not a form, right. because it takes a manifestation of various forms, mm. which are gender. I'm not talking about only male, female. There are innumerable genders, mm. different forms, different animals, different. Yeah, yeah. Forms in nature, so everything is feminine. Correct. Because each one is coming through that same garb. Each one is connected, interconnected, and totally having the same bloodline running through each one. Mm. There is no other. Right. You know, we are tied through our umbilical cords to one single space. That's what Hiranyagarbha is all about. To Wonderful. me, and that I think makes it yeah. so amazingly feminine that the mm. whole universe is throbbing with that rhythm, that energy all the time. Now, uh, you know, like this is a question to both of you because you know Rini really well, uh, uh, I think, as a friend, as a fellow artist. Uh, so uh, le let's talk a little bit about Rini Dumal and uh, what, in your opinion, where is she placed in the Indian contemporary art? You know her work, you know her as a person. Uh, if you're asking me, I don't, I didn't know her so personally, but I traveled hmm. with her sometimes. Yeah. And show, I had a two-man show with her. I had a two-man show with her. What I found, again, so amazing about her was, the first thing which fascinated, uh, I think we were in Bali together and all that was the first time we were together for a camp and sh all the time she was sketching, she mm. was walking, she was sketching, she was eating, she was sketching, she was <laughs> sitting, she was sketching. It was so amazing to see an artist like that. It was, uh, it was just so, uh, you know, that that uh, idea of Shakti, I think, was very much inherent in her. And that also was, uh, for me, a situation of awe. And the next thing was that there was this amazing thing that she used to share, share everything about art, about herself, about anything, you know, you talk to her and she was very forthcoming, very open. There was something about her which just brought you closer to her, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, there is a lot more, but I, I think I will let Brinda. Yeah. Brin uh, Br Brinda, you know, she, 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 she grew up in yeah. Bengal and then she moved to Baroda for her but, uh, education. You asked a different question, so mm -hmm. uh, should I answer that first? Or yeah, should? answer that. <laughs> So uh, I think Rini was a very underestimated artist, I'll tell you honestly. She was fabulously talented, she was hardworking, she was prolific and uh, she really had a drive which I saw in no other artist. I remember uh, going to, uh, you know, passing by Mahabalipuram and she said, can we stop here and see these caves? We were back, coming back from Pondicherry, one of those mm. trips. We traveled a lot together. Okay. And, uh, uh, you know, she just wouldn't stop sketching and I was sitting there and getting bored, really bored, because uh, uh, I was waiting for her and she said, just, just uh, 15 minutes more, 10 minutes more. And she was driven completely. She enjoyed her work and, you know, and th this uh, particular show today, if uh, I hope all of you saw it, uh, came right. to the at least some of you. I hope you came uh, for the walkthrough. It was just fantastic. Otherwise, uh, I'm sure Radhika can organize another walkthrough for them whenever they want. <laughs> so, um, like I said, yes, she was underestimated, and I knew her extremely well. I mean, really well. We traveled. We went on art camps together. We went mm. for art workshops together. And she would work and work and work, and uh, you know, I think she could work with her eyes closed. It was yeah, mm. she, she was yeah. that good, and uh, she would talk about her work. She would show me her sketches, and I think I really saw quite a lot of uh, what she was doing. So I think considering that, um, 
I think she was not, uh, you know, one of those who would go out and uh, backbite or she would not, uh, politically she was, uh, you know, not one of those artists who would, uh, you know, bring anybody down in that sense. So I, th I don't know what it was that, uh, mm. uh, I mean, I think I like that about her, that she was so genuine and so, and so generous. She was extremely generous. She would just paint something, draw something, and she would give it to you and she'd say, you know, yeah. please take this. So, so uh, I mean, she obviously has influences from everywhere that she was r uh, traveling around. But do you see, uh, uh, do you see a, a distinct uh, influence from her Janma Bhumi to her Karma Bhumi, Bengal and Baroda? Definitely, I see it. I remember going many, many years ago to Baroda and uh, went to Rini Dumal's studio. She didn't know me, I didn't know her. Mm -hmm. And I said, I want to buy some of your prints. And uh, so she took out these prints and she showed them to me. They were very different then. And uh, we were not friends or anything of the sort. I bought some uh, prints because that's something that you don't get in Mumbai. At that time, you couldn't just buy uh, etchings or lithographs or, and, she, and it was amazing work and uh, many years later when I met her she had started painting a lot I mean there was less of printing and then again much later she started doing a lot of other kind of work she started doing terracotta she started doing uh, ceramics and uh, thanks to the center that they had in uh, Baroda and uh, it was, uh, you know, I've seen over the years the different kinds of work that she did. And uh, right. I would say that one of my favorites, I, I think the favorite work of hers are her books. <coughs> right. Yeah. I just love her books. And mm. uh, I even bought some books from her. And uh, she was one of those few artists who did books, real books, you know. And so many of them, and uh, she took so much trouble over them, and she would see to it that... Uh, you know, they got published or they got whatever it is, editions of so many books. And uh, she got them framed and all kinds of things. And uh, she used to keep telling me, I think you should you should do a book, you should do a book. Okay. And I used to say, Rini, I think there's still time for that. So she would say, yeah, you're right. But you know, I'm coming to the end of my life now. And uh, I used to say, what rubbish, Rini, don't talk nonsense, what are you talking? And uh, yeah, sure enough, I mean, she said, you know, my family, a lot of them did not uh, live long or she said her brother also passed away mm -hmm. early and she said, now my turn, my time has come. Okay. And I used to rubbish it, but the fact is that yes, I mean, I good, wish we good. had Rini here So le let me ask a general question to all my panelists. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, we, are li we have to be a little look <laughs> short answers <laughs> how do you see all of you see uh, a difference or an evolution of your form of art in india over the last decades of your practice do you see as a dancer there's an evolution and what it is very short i think evolution is inevitable uh, it's as i say you know which shan shan cheese badal rahi hai you're constantly moving so evolution is happening now, from your own perspective, from your own practice, you can see how much things have evolved. Right. How many stories have we translated? How many stories are we addressing which are different? Right. Uh, how much liberty as artists we have to interpret things that we want to do it uh, without an apology, without being fearful. Mm. So I think there is evolution. From my point of view, I think uh, I have evolved. I'm questioning much more. Mm. When we were training as younger kids, um, we never questioned our teachers, mm. our gurus. We always surrendered. We never okay. asked questions. Agar din hai, to din hai, raat hai, to raat hai. We never yeah. questioned. But I think you come to a stage where as students and practitioners, we are constantly questioning. And in my practice, I'm questioning. And therefore, mm. I'm questioning many elements and aspects of my tradition and seeing how I can take that forward to the next generation without diluting it. Right. Brenda, what about you? I think we all have to evolve. Uh, as creative people, you have to evolve. Otherwise, uh, you know, it doesn't make you happy. That's one. Two is that, uh, I mean, there's always room for improvement or, you know, to evolve. There's always room. And uh, I think actors feel the same way. Dancers feel the same way. Musicians feel the same way. And uh, 
a little bit of change is also very important. It's important to keep changing your work and uh, right. making it different. See, Maji. Uh, I think this is a very difficult question because uh, evolving and measuring uh, is not something in creativity. It is like river. Mm. You know, it can go to one city, second city, third city, fourth city. And it uh, even if it reaches the ocean, it again becomes vapor. So <laughs> I think it is just a process of movement. It is just, you know, you feel you evolved and the next moment you feel, oh my God, I think I've gone five steps back. And then again, you're struggling with something or creating your own struggles. At least I do. I, I like to create my own uh, sort of uh, barriers and I like to put myself in situations where I like to pull myself out and see, okay, have I been able to achieve that, what I wanted? And I then see myself achieving it and then I look back at that work and I say, no, you know, it's not happened. Yeah. So I think it is uh, very hypothetical for me. It has been never been that, okay, I've evolved, you know, like, yeah. I've always seen. मुझे लगता है कि शुरुआत पे और अभी में जब मैंने मटेरियल कपड़ा यूज़ करना चालू किया था 94 में तब उसको इतना एक्सेप्टेंस नहीं था नए मटेरियल को लेकिन मैं आज देख रही हूँ कि हम मटेरियल के लिए लेके बहुत उसको एक्सेप्ट करना चालू हुआ है अलग-अलग टेक्नोलॉजी मटेरियल बहुत वाइड तरह जब मैंने 2006 में प्राइस टैक क्लिप इस्तेमाल करना स्टार्ट किया तब मैं सीन बदल चुका था तो हम बहुत सारी चीजों को एक्सेप्ट करना चालू कर दिया हमारी रेंज देखने की बहुत बढ़ गई है मटेरियल टेक्नोलॉजी बॉन्डरी सारी मतलब फाइन आर्ट परफॉर्मिंग आर्ट की बीच में से भी ब्लर हो गई है बहुत एक वाइड रेंज आ गई है ऐसा मुझे लगता है कि हमारा मटेरियल वाइज टेक्निक वाइज सब्जेक्ट वाइज और किस तरह से बहुत लब बड़ा हो गया कैंपस ग्रेट स्मृति जी जस्ट इन कंटिन्यूएशन ऑफ व्हाट यू सेड योर वर्क रिप्रेजेंट्स अ होस्ट ऑफ विमेंस इश्यूज सच एस अनपेड लेबर वाइल विजुलाइजिंग द ट्रांसग्रेसिंग नेचर ऑफ मैं जब भी कोई मटेरियल यूज़ करती हूँ जैसे कि मैंने एक काम किया था 2020 में श्रेड एंड केक तो उस वो उसमें मैंने अखबार की वो कटिंग कलेक्ट करी थी जिसमें कि वूमेन के ऊपर हुए अत्याचारों के बारे में सब न्यूज़ थी उनको कलेक्ट किया फिर उनको मैंने फाड़ दिया उनको कट करा फिर उसके बाद में पीस के काउंटेंस केक बनाए तो मुझे लगता है कि ये जो प्रोसेस है ये इम्पोर्टेंट है मेरे लिए जो प्रोसेस है उसमें काम होता है मैंने वो सारी न्यूज़ को कलेक्ट किया उनको फाड़ा वो वायलेंस के साथ में मैंने उनको ग्रेट किया और उनके काउंटेंस केक बनाए तो मेरे लिए मटेरियल ऐसा था या फिर मैंने जब वेब बनाया तो जब वेब बनाया तो उसमें भी मैंने कोशिश करी कि मैं जैसे मकड़ी अपना जाला बुनती है उसको उतनी ही ईमानदारी से उतनी ही पेशेंस के साथ में उतने ही धीरे-धीरे बुनूं तो इस ढंग से होता है या फिर कोई भी मटेरियल या फिर जो मैंने यूट्रस बनाया डिक्लेरेशन वो तो उसमें भी मैंने बहुत सारी फीमेल लोगों के साथ में मिलके काम किया और काम के दौरान बहुत सारी बातचीत निकल के आती थी और हम लोग जो जो वो काम बनाया है उसमें आर्मीचर नहीं इस्तेमाल करते वो सारा के सारा वही मटेरियल जो एंड प्रोडक्ट है वो इम्पोर्टेंट नहीं है वो प्रोसेस इम्पोर्टेंट है तो इस ढंग से होता है मेरा ब्रिंदा जी द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज़ फॉर यू विथ ऑल द प्रोग्रेस दैट हैज़ बीन मेड हैज़ द सब or is there still a long way to go before we step out of the shadows of the patriarchal past? Um, I think we're getting there, maybe a little slowly, but we are getting there definitely. I, uh, I mean, again, there's a big difference uh, in the urban landscape and the rural right. uh, scene, but let's talk about, uh, you know, cities, I think. Uh, one of the things that I've noticed that a lot more men are taking on, you know, at least they're going to study mm -hmm. uh, art 
right and design uh, earlier it used to be just a college full of women and uh, you know a few uh, men so obviously there is something about uh, mm. equality coming in the, through that way in the younger generation i also see you know i run the arts festival and i see a lot more men taking part uh, i think this question is very much for you gauri because women there's a maximum number of women in the dance field and very few men in the dance right. field so i'm i'm looking at it from the opposite uh, way that you are asking this question and uh, that's it i think that's uh, that itself tells you that uh, maybe we are getting to some kind of an equality so what about you what, what what's your take on this because it is true you see more women in dance than men yes there are more women in dance and um, and that that is uh, something which is i don't think has changed much to take an example um, like when i teach i predominantly girls training with us so i came to a point saying that maybe i should open a class just for men and boys to come and train uh, there is there is that sort of a thing in the arts though our tradition was the kathaka tradition was predominantly male dancers right they were kathakas who were predominantly male dancers so women started coming in i think just pre independence around that period of time right. the cusp of it and post independence interestingly when the art form became structured hmm. women started adopting it much more and the patriarchal uh, the patriarch became a bit more in the side wings so a lot of women started coming in that's my uh, my reading and my general uh, spectrum from the exposure that i've had now there are women and more women are joining and less are men in our form in the performing arts mm. i'm talking from the dance point of view but the th in theater and all again that's a different uh, story uh i think there's an uh, following question to that uh, how has indian dance forms which have always been a blend of masculine and feminine adopted to contemporary notions of gender such as the expression of coyness might be inter interpreted very differently nowadays it is and i will um share my example when i was training in and when i was 16 years old and my um, uh, guruji is sitting here i wo i would have a lot of questions when there was this chair chart राधा कृष्ण का जो छेड़छाड़ है उस समय उस जमान में भक्ति भाव नहीं था वी वर सिक्सटीन ईयर ओल्ड वी डि नॉट अंडरस्टैंड दैट द छेड़छाड़ ऑल्सो हैज अ लेवल ऑफ स्पिरिचुअलिज्म इन इट इट इज नॉट द कलोकियल छेड़छाड़ दैट इज बीन नोटिस एंड इंटरप्रिटेड बट नाउ व्हेन वी लुक एट इट यू हैव दैट सात्विक भाव इन विच यू प्रेजेंट द छेड़छाड़ दैट वॉज देन दिस इज नाउ बट वेन आई एम टीचिंग अ यंग टीन एजर आई एम हेजिटेंट I'm hesitant to say kanha me to se hari chhodo sari nit din chhede karat nahi jaane de ab that particular element doesn't exist wo rasta nahi hai kunj galiyan nahi hai wo kapde hum nahi pehnte hain jisme chhed chhad ka jo ek bhav tha jo prastut hota tha so that way things have changed and younger students are questioning but as traditional holders right. we do say डेट ये भाव हम लोगों ने सीखा है इस ग्रामर को कायम रखना जरूरी है बिकॉज दैट्स अ फाउंडेशन ऑन विच आर क्लासिकल आर्ट फॉर्म्स आर स्टैंडिंग राइट सो वी विल नॉट लेट दैट शेप आउट बट मे बी विल टीच दिस कॉन्टेक्स ऑफ द कॉइनेस एक्सेट्रा मे बी जब थोड़े बड़े हो जाते हैं जब वो समझ आती है कि देर इज अ मेल गेज और देर इज देर इज अ डिफरेंट फील इन विच यू प्रेजेंट दैट भाव तब वो सिखाया जा सकता है बट से दिस थिंग्स हैव चेंज tradition we can't change but we need to find a method in how we communicate that to the younger generation which is a questioning mind which is a mind which is changing constantly and is very shanik mind right you know things are cut 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 moving on so how do you engage how do you hold on to it still keeping the gravity of the form wo zaruri hai see now um, <laughs> radhika has been kind enough to walk us through the entire show of rini dhamal so works in over the um, or the three floors if i have to ask all of you uh, one word just one word how do you feel you are moved by the show or rini's work or how do you feel you connect with the show or her work 
just one word what is that like uh, that you feel associated with her work one word Seema. Inspired. Okay. <coughs> hmm? <laughs> what about you? I have one word I meant to Sorry. Sorry. Inspired. Heavy. Inspired. Inspired. Jap. Gravity. Okay. Aura. Very good. So I think uh, we all agree. I think these are the words that most of us kind of associate with. Was this a competition? Now <laughs> <laughs> Trying to make a TV show out of it. <laughs> you know, sometimes what happens, two long answers, you know, can get very monotonous. So I was trying to reinvent a way to make it engaging. <laughs> I think Jab, that is what she said is very important uh, inspired gravity and aura to me I think it was this subtle balance of color texture the craftsmanship I mean I am allowed to have that luxury right I'm allowed to have the luxury to bend my rules right <laughs> so Yes, I think all of you must see if you have not had the time to see it. I don't know how long the exhibition is uh, open for, maybe another week or maybe today is the last date. I am not really aware of it. But I think uh, I told Rainy, uh, um, I told Radhika that like uh, I've, I've known your mother, but I've never seen all these works. I mean, like they're so and then one can see an evolution in that. I think that that's a good part of it, like how her younger works were and how her later works were. Uh, now, uh, let me ask a question to all of you. Uh, you all have been doing wonderful until now. We are on time. So, um, I think until now, the Gadia Vichal Ria, there's an on time, indigo time. What creative leadership roles do you all foresee for women in the next decade? What creative ro leadership roles do you all foresee for women in the next 10 years or a decade? Women are already experienced to do this thing. I think I think that subject wise, it will be a change. And the situation will be a little bit of a female. It will be a self. Uh, did, did we understand the question first of all? Yeah? Yeah. Hmm. yeah. Okay. I think already I think there are a lot of women in mm. the say in the art world mm. uh, who are uh, leaders or who are uh, I mean who are not just creative but they are they manage things creatively and uh, you know I think a lot of gallery owners for example are women most right. of them are women right all, no, almost almost Many bankers. Bankers um, are also women. Bankers are few, I think. Not so many no, bankers. But they're few. coming up. Yeah, they're coming up for sure. I think I, I, I whichever bank I hold an account, no, but if there is a woman manager. If you're asking in the creative <laughs> so field, I'm saying. No, they can manage creatively. Okay. okay. <laughs> 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 so let's not just limit creativity to just creative forms of businesses or professions, but also like about making things more creative. It means like looking at from a different angle. That's right. Yeah. And uh, I would say even women. Anything can be creative, right? In fact, women are mu such yeah. multitaskers. I think mm. they're even uh, yeah. creative in the house, they're creative in the kitchen, they're creative all mm. around. So, um, you know, I think it's uh, amazing how so many women, in fact, uh, I think one of the sayings that Rini said downstairs, I read that, was that uh, these are not Chakti, it's not about goddesses and about right. yeah. devis, it's more about the everyday woman who's, yeah. uh, mm. you know, that's how no, she I, sees them. I see Shakti as the spiritual energy which all of us have. 
irrespective of which gender we belong to That's it's right. like a it's an embedded energy within us and it manifests in different forms at different times and in different situations That's right. you know it can be channelized as productive it can be channelized as negative positive destructive anything it all depends upon how we are able to kind of manipulate this nuclear bomb within us and then use it for good or bad i see it that way I don't know how many you agree with me. Yes, we agree. <laughs> I would just like to say one thing that uh, for me, uh, the question what you asked was what was it? Can I hear it again? Even I forgot. <laughs> Can you read it out again? I just want to. <laughs> what, what, I, I think we've gone way. Is it changing in the. What creative leadership roles, okay. creative yeah. leadership roles, do you all foresee for women in the next 10 years? Yeah, of course, there. Uh, 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 as far as I think, there is um, already, as Brinda has said earlier, or she has, you've also answered this question? No. no. So no. Uh, it is already there, the creative leadership. I think it is about owning that leadership, right? Yeah. Because they are already the base of all creative source is the feminine hmm. and not uh, you're talking uh, uh, only about the physicality I hmm. go to the root okay you know you're talking about a physical form as a woman hmm. but if you go down to the root it is the feminine right so are we only talking about the feminine or we are talking about the woman only the woman are we talking I'm asking you a question <laughs> <laughs> It's like, you know, just the exam paper <laughs> set, kya usi ko bol <laughs> No, I think we are not talking about the physical form. We, we are, are not. talking so about the, the brain. The feminine is already here we owned up. The, the, the feminine, thinking. yeah, the feminine uh, has already owned up. Yeah. It is already there manifesting itself in various ways. And you can see it around yourself, how it is manifesting in making you realize about your own um, I think limitations. I, I think if I have to kind of dissect the question, yeah. uh, when we are talking about leadership roles, we are not looking at gender. Yeah, uh, so that's why I'm saying the feminine. The next way to dissect it is that when, it, when, you, when we are looking at the creativity, we are not looking at a, a, an artistic way of doing things, but we are looking at a problem solving or addressing an issue in a different manner, which, is, which could be much more creative. Or That's in science, it could be much more inventive. Or if it is a social studies, it could be much more, you know, like inclusive. So we're really looking at like a different way of like leading uh, as a leader. So I would just say one line about the feminine. Tune roka mujko jahan jahan, main wahan wahan se guzar gaya. So this Very is nice. what the feminine is all about. Right, right. I can make anything. Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, Gauri, this is your question. Can you talk about your transcultural experience of practicing Kathak in Europe and how the art form has adapted to Western sensibilities? Interesting because. Um, no, okay, let me make it more easier. No, when you dance here in India, do you dance differently as against when you dance in the Western world or any other country? No, I dance, I am the same person whether I'm sitting in Mumbai in India or I'm performing uh, in Paris uh, at Muse Gime. I think what I saw, the transition when I work or when I moved abroad to work there was that we took a lot of our text-based work for granted. And we, we know that when we're performing for an Indian audience, they understand the context. They know Shiva Shakti, they know Krishna. Whereas when we went to the West, it na jaldi samaj mein nahi aata tha. Mm. So we had to look at doing program notes and explanation. And therefore, there were these entry points. But after some time, I also merged those lines and we never went back to it. Mm. One thing which I noticed, which my form changed, that it became, not that it was not physical, it became much more physical when I started performing. Um, physical in the sense, it became much more dynamic it became much more fast paced because I just felt that the Western gaze needed that mm. uh, 
uh, the speed at which we travel, then engage them back into a better cabinet to bring that. So the, the modem of uh, operation sort of changed and I experimented with different audiences from different parts of the world. So the French audience would have a very different right. take on it, whereas a, a British audience would have a very different take on it. What gave me the strength was to try out stories which were not experimented before. So I did move away from our conventional Krishna Radha, mm. moved away a little bit from the Shiva Parvati and started looking at characters like Gandhari mm. from the Mahabharata. Started looking at other Ashtalakshmi as a conceptual idea. So that made me in my practice braver mm. to be able to bring those unusual catalogs back into my repertoire. So that is where I thought the shift as a practitioner, I felt when I navigated to different geographical spaces. But in terms of my <coughs> philosophy of dance, that really didn't change. Right. But articulation and the prism through which I projected my dance shifted. Right. Uh, Smriti ji, a question aap ke liye. Uh, just like, you know, I'm in the architecture practice. We have Western architects, we have Japanese architects, we have Indian architects. So many times the mag magazines are like, you know, focusing on the works of these countries. Also, we have Indian influences also. So all of us get inspired, influenced, and many times we also kind of copy. And it's a very f easy and fast kind of a way to change your way of looking at the art form, especially in architecture. Now, when it comes to art, uh, do you feel that the, there are international women artists? And what is their influence on the current Indian contemporary women artist in India? Do you mm -hmm. see there is an influence or you don't see no. it? I मुझे नहीं लगता कि ये बात ऐसी है लेकिन आपके साथ क्या डांस में ये दूसरे कल्चर की बात है लेकिन यहाँ पर different narratives की बात है मगर जब fine art की या की बात visual art की आती है तो उसमें इस तरह का कोई भेदभाव नहीं है और अभी क्योंकि virtually इतना ज़्यादा connected है सारे काम एक दूसरे से सारे artists भी एक दूसरे से कि उस तरह की boundary देश विदेश की बची नहीं है Okay. और uh, कोई कोई वहां पे काम करता है उसके जैसा यहां पे काम करता है जैसा भी कुछ बचा नहीं हर व्यक्ति की इंडिविजुअलिटी है हर व्यक्ति सब्जेक्ट के लेवल पे पॉलिटिकल लेवल पे एक दूसरे से कनेक्टेड है और ये एक यूनिवर्सली एक लोग हैं और जो अपने आसपास की चीजों पे रिएक्ट करते हैं तो मुझे नहीं लगता कि इस तरह की कोई चीज आर्ट uh, सीन में विजुअल आर्ट सीन में है uh, now, the last question uh, of this section, which I want to discuss, the change of institutional mindset and the change brought about by more women in administrative roles in academia. Shall I repeat again? Or have you understood the question? Discuss the change in institutional mindset and the change brought about by more women in administrative roles in the academia. I think this is quite similar to the other question about uh, women and leadership, leadership, roles. leadership roles. But I think we are talking specifically about the institutional mindset related to art forms, I guess. <laughs> I don't think there is such a change has been any. I, I don't see it no. No. no you don't change, see any change. No. Okay. I don't see change either, and I'm I'm going to talk over this because the government has remained the same way as it used to be 15, 20 years back, as it's connected with the performing arts. I can talk from our okay. form. Uh, I think it definitely needs more women coming in, so the understanding is changing. They are predominantly administrators who come in for two years and then they move out. They don't understand the culture. They don't understand mm -hmm. the context of where the artists are who have been running the marathon for a long time. So I think there needs to be a bit more cradling, a bit more support that we need from the art, from the system. Right. That's my, from the, the government system. Mike. 
I don't think there is so much of uh, institutional support to artists. I, I don't know about the other art forms and talking about contemporary art. So it really doesn't make much difference. I don't know. Uh, I have, you know, uh, no, of course you would. But what I'm saying is art is a very, um, it, uh, uh, art as contemporary art, fine art, it is a very individual space that we work from. Hmm. Uh, it is not a gharana. It right. is not a, you know, even if we probably have institutions in art, but they have, you know, uh, each artist is an in, is little institution. So you, 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 you say that they, like, I mean. They have their own uh, thing to say. You know, it is very different than from other art forms, I think contemporary. No, see, there, there seems there is a perception that more women are now heading the institutions which support arts. Okay. It could be museum, it could be a college of art, architecture, dance, whatever it is. So, having women at the top, has it changed, or it has it given more avenues, or has it promoted more women in the fields? Okay. That question could be answered the best by some students uh, okay. of those institutions. I think uh, because uh, at least I'm out from it. I don't know. No, but I, as I said, there's always been the, the managerial level, say even of art galleries, even a lot in the museums I have seen is that uh, even if the person on the top is a man, you know, after that there are a whole lot of women, women who yes. are. Uh, kind of supporting the system and making it what it is and even if they are behind the scenes I think that women are actually the power behind uh, right you know I for one run an arts festival and I have uh, only mostly women who who are leading yeah. all the various sections whether it is dance or music dance though definitely but they, whether right. it's music or whether it's theater and they are amazing I mean you know they are really amazing uh, Seema ji, let me ask you one question. Now we are in 2022. Instagram is the favorite pastime for most of us. Uh, has Instagram, social media, Facebook, all these have provided new avenues and new voices. Uh, is it like something like you can just like express what you have? And is it like something helping? You know, what would not have been possible unless there was an institutional support or a promoter in the past? Uh, of course, uh, all these things, if we see them positively and use them in a very, um, in, you know, just like um, uh, we are taking some kind of a medicine, you know, <laughs> like it has <laughs> to be properly rationed in your activities and the way you use it, it can be very uh, helpful. But I don't think it can take uh, the space of any institution or galleries or uh, I don't think so. Or so as has, hasn't these platforms helped you in your work and promotion of your work? Of course it does. It does. It does. It does um, uh, help in the visibility. I cannot deny it. I would never deny that. But when you're but using these During platforms the pandemic, I think I was most lost in the first two, three months. I think uh, of the pandemic and uh, probably uh, if all these um, digital mediums were not there uh, mm. connecting us socially uh, whether it was zoom or it was any other platform or it was basic uh, Instagram you know uh, mm. I think it would have been a very different world it would have been but it's a two-way traffic right I mean like you benefited because you also like show your work to everybody around but also you kind of receive criticism at times right yeah because of course but you have to uh, also be careful about what you are doing there mm. you know mm. uh, whether you're really whiling away with your time and um, mm. uh, using your personal data and I don't know so it is uh, it depends on what you want from there every space is there to uh, after all uh, uh, it is always a two-way traffic of uh, positive and negative. It's uh, probably what you choose. Right. Now, Brinda, what's your take on this? I think social media has become absolutely necessary now. Mm. 
um, because I think a lot of young people use it a lot and uh, I think it's a new thing. I remember in the old days people used to see us in the newspaper. No longer do they look, they uh, read the paper or see us in the newspaper. I'm speaking about myself and a lot of uh, people would just come up to me and say, oh, I've seen you on page three or, mm -hmm. you know, it was awful when they said that. But on the other hand, at least they saw you, they knew who you were. And now I have a lot of people who come up to me and say, oh, yeah, we, we saw you on Instagram or we, we read about you on right. uh, Facebook or we saw this and you're doing so much. Said, How do you know I'm doing so much? Right. Because uh, they have seen something about me. So, um, yeah, I agree that, you know, you should be careful what you put out there. But uh, I think it helps. Definitely it does help, especially younger people. It's a w w What about your form of art, yeah. dance? Uh, I totally agree with uh, Vrinda and Seema. I think it has opened the floodgates. It's not just our exposure, but we are also seeing what others are able to do. Right. Uh, the accessibility has become so many younger artists are able to post things, be able to view their work and be able to engage with them in a different way. So that has been a very positive way. Secondly, I think work-wise as well, ek baat hai, when you're posting things, you'll always look at it mm -hmm. double time. You know, you'll take double take on it, ki dale ki nahi dale. So that has also made you think a little bit more what you put in the public space and how the feedback will be taken. So I think there is both both the spectrums again coming in. Accessibility, but also to be aware of what is going out and how much of that you're putting out to be exposed, overexposed as well. So there has to be a balance um, through this uh, network. I think that when the online platform is increased, the speed has increased. Everything is increased today and it has been life in its life. Our soaking time, the slow down, is very important against it because the speed of it is so much that there is no one thing that is not registered, we are not able to think about any issue, we are not able to see it from every place. So, I think that... I am very happy with you. So, it is very important that it will be slow down. It is going against it. So, because... You know, I do a lot of recruitment of architects for my own firm and many times I, I'm interviewing like hordes of people like you know if you put an ad you'll find lots of people applying and everything and uh, there was a time 27 years back when I started the firm people used to see our work visit our work now everybody sees and visit but that's on Instagram so it's an instant memory wa wash so if I ask a question like, do you know any of our projects? Actually, it's not possible for them to remember anything because they've just seen it, but there's not register in it. And uh, I think human memory is still very important. So, and that's an influencer. Unless we register, we don't remember. And if we don't remember, we can't apply it. It's as simple as that. So although social media has connected us very well, but uh, I say it's a, like a, a delicate bone and a vein, you know. I mean, there, there is good side to it and the yeah. bad side to it. Yeah, and and uh, so information is at definitely at the at, at the uh, at the palm, but I think how much it actually gets registered, and and that's that's one of the most uh, important thing is uh, that if you don't register. It, it's as good as that you're not spent time. It is not an institution. It is for an instant reference. It is reference. supposed to be like that. Yeah. You it's have a library. To be, it's I a library. think it is taken for granted for you to be responsible. Mm. It is for the person to be responsible. Mm. And how responsibly you're using this instrument. After all, a knife can be used in various ways. Right. Not to use knife at all is you can't cut a vegetable without it, right? So you have to be responsible how much you use it, how you use it, how you see it, how you perceive it, what you're putting at it. So that is, uh, I think that is our discretion. We cannot, uh, uh, at least I uh, take it as something which is, uh, which can be used positively and responsibly. Right. Yeah. Uh, with the advancements 
in feminist thoughts reinterpreting the entire concept of gender okay, let me restart the question again with the new advancements feminist thoughts reinterpreting the entire concept of gender when how would the non normative gender expressions such as lgbt plus find their way into the visual arts so basically we are talking about like at some point we used to interpret feminism like okay, now we have we have found a new way to interpret a new expression which is called the lgbt plus now do we find that it has a place or a future in the visual arts yeah i think it's open to anyone of course i why not it, the, the movement is always to thrust forward right i think but do we see in indian art of course uh, we do there is a India strong is, presence is, of lgbt plus uh, she's just talked about ardhana reshwar i don't think this is a present form <laughs> you know yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a concept which has been there there it's always been there mm. uh, there have been genders various genders and how uh, you know uh, it, it, i think it, over the time how it takes its own course there are concepts which go under due to the social pressures due to the political pressures then they emerge again then they um, go back again it's like um, you know lay par lay you know it, one over the other and uh, maybe now is the time it's come by uh, it's going to have its own space and its own respectability because uh, you cannot uh, i don't think you can ever mold just in two genders it is not possible it is just not possible i think god was extremely creative mm. while <laughs> while god. creating us all so i i think we are running out of time we just have 1 minute 7:45 was i was told by dhwani that you should have a hard stop that's why she's coming and standing over there you know like she is giving me clues so one last question shakti to you one word <laughs> or maybe one Why sentence starting with me one <laughs> sentence one <laughs> sentence <laughs> woman shakti to you only one word only one sentence we'll give you a little okay. leverage she is the collaborative power okay brenda collaborates empowerment good ardhanareshwar great So I think with those few words, I would like to conclude this uh, beautiful panel discussion that we had. And uh, now we open the panelists to answer the questions uh, which the audience would have. Uh, we will have about 15 minutes for this. So at best, we can take about five questions. Dwani, uh, could you just like hand over the mic to question? And, and can you can you? direct the question to somebody or no so i think i'd ask all of you all uh, this question cuz i want to know um is there some sort of pressure that you feel because you know every time that the word shakti comes it comes with a sense of power responsibility to you all so as feminist artists that say and all of you all have varied art forms do you feel that kind of pressure to portray your art form in a certain way I think it was very good question. Do you feel the pressure just because you're a woman that you need to express your art form in a certain manner, or would you have done it if 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 your gender was different? Am I correct in interpreting? I think sometimes I feel the pressure when I feel that my work is looking too decorative. Or okay. You know, it's like. Uh, you know i don't like i earlier i had said that i don't i feel a little uh, uh self conscious about that in the sense i like my work to look neutral i don't want it to look feminine mm. i don't want it to look masculine but And do you work towards it to look neutral or is it a natural expression so when i began painting it was extremely decorative yeah. i would say many as also i have a background in textile design so a little bit so of that would come in right and i think textile is a very feminine kind of uh, mm. medium you know right but i still use a lot of textile in my work that 
the you know the impressions and block. I think even Rini is, uses a lot of right. uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. block printing and the printing uh, you know edu the many layers, from layers her to education her work, or yeah. whatever. But uh, over a period of time, I've kind of abstained from using very very floral things or very you know decorative strokes because yeah. I feel it's just too too decorative. So, but that I think is just a matter of taste. I'm not sure what it is. I will get in here. It's interesting that you said that our dance form is very ornate yeah. and now I've gone back into the whole element of design, design of the body, design of the shapes you create in the space, design of your costume and therefore it goes back into sort of an androgyny because the mm. physicality is changing. Right. I've, you know, I'm as, he, as our female body changes, we, we don't talk about that, but when the female body is changing, the, the way you articulate the art form also changes. Mm. So there is definitely a shift that I see in my interpretation of where I find the source of Shakti coming in. So from the Sutra of Bhava to the Sutra of the physicality now is where I see uh, In fact, my work right. has become a little architectural because I'm surrounded by architects, architects. my husband. <laughs> and my both my daughters are architects. So, right. uh, <laughs> so you know, I mean, yeah, kind of influenced that way. What about you? I think this question is to everyone, right? Yes, to everyone. You, you know, what's your name? Ada. Hi, Ada. When I started working, I was pressured that I was going to practice in my work with feminism, which is only one gender. I think that the female is only one gender, and only male is only one gender. I am not against it, I am not against it, I am not against it. But as much as I am not against it, I am not against it, I am not against it, I am not against it. And people are looking at me. Now, I have accepted it, that it is okay, and I am very comfortable with that subject. So, at the beginning, there was no pressure to not be against it. Actually, no pressure. I don't feel the pressure. But uh, it is very much there, I think, in my works. But I've never tried to push it, like mm. try to make it something very... Uh, uh, usually my... F the imagery, uh, whatever it is, is very calm mm. and... I don't think I, I work yeah. towards it and it has never pressurized me, no. Good. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah. Uh, thank you for this panel. Uh, so, uh, you know, just listening to all of your talk, I, um, you know, I really believe the apple doesn't fall far from the tree and nepotism takes over in many people's lives. Now, are you all as leading artists, uh, Gauri, your mother, your Guruji, sitting here, do you, and your daughter is a, a dancer. I mean, do you think there's this Shakti or this this power which you're transferring or this creative energy that you're surrounded by that influences the next generation because that's something I'm very interested in because you know the next generations of the artists are all coming out. Any of you? You too. Yeah, I'll, I'll go Your daughter is an artist also, not only an architect. Rinda. <laughs> Yes, actually, it's now the fourth generation of uh, women practicing. It's also about the exposure. I grew up half of the time not training, but listening and observing my mother's classes and okay. her workshops. So, kai compositions mere zehen mein already thi, jo sikhi nahi thi. So, it's also jo cheeze chal rahi hai aas paas that creates that mahal in which the generation comes in. But then it's a task, and ye kya jata hai ki under one big tree second tree cannot grow. Hmm. So when do you detach it? When do you allow them to take the narrative forward in their own skills that they develop through? So, so I'm, yeah. I feel I'm blessed because my mother never held me. She never said, ki nahi, aise hi karna hai. Hmm. Jaise si, jaise hu, this is how you're going to do. You're not going to. If that was the case, I would have been choked. But she said, learn this, but your mind works in a different way. Learn the base. But then within that, you can tweak it the way you want. And therefore, the romance for dance, every day is like, today is another day. You know, it's that josh in which you can give the next generation that they believe in what they want to learn and how they can take this forward without losing the essence of it. So I right. think that mahal atmosphere is very crucial for the, for the generation. And I'm blessed and, uh, to have that.
generations around. No, I absolutely agree. I think it's just the way that, you know, your kids are brought up and uh, they're just surrounded by art, but at the same time, you don't force them into it. And uh, when they had to choose a career, my daughters both, I thought one will be an artist, one will be an architect, and you know, I thought that, but I said, do what you like. And they said, no, we take, both of them said we'll take architecture because we will have that choice of being an artist if we want to even afterwards. Sure enough, uh, though both are practicing architects, my younger one also does a lot of graphic design and uh, she enjoys that too. So I think it's, um, call it nepotism, call it what you like, but uh, definitely uh, I think you the thing thing to do is just be natural about it and not right. force them into it. And if they take to it, that's fine. Also, I think as as uh, little kids, they were taken to the museum, dragged to the museum. I would say because they were thoroughly bored. But they appreciate that now, and they say, "Oh, thank God, you took us here and you took us there." And you know, I told a friend of mine, "I'm taking them to IKEA." So they said, "Why IKEA? My kids would never want to go to IKEA." <laughs> but we are like that, you know. We we like to go to such places, so. <laughs> So they've been, they've grown up like that. Mm. Well, uh, I think it's uh, like both of them have said, I actually never gave, yeah, I think I did give them that space maybe that the, the fact that I was working in my studio most of the time and they were scribbling somewhere around there and uh, probably something must have gone. Both my children are at it. One is a photographer, an artist, and the other is an environmental uh, artist, <laughs> illustrator, artist, whatever. So uh, I am very bad with categorizing or putting the, you know, people in slots and things. But of course, I think the influence is there. Uh, but it is a lot to do with themselves. How? They perceive world. Well, they um, they may be artists, but they have followed very different paths. Just like um, you know, maybe Brinda's children. Uh, and uh, I think uh, nowhere at any point of time I would have told them that, मतलब art कर लो types या art करना चाहिए या ये बहुत अच्छा है या ऐसा ऐसा I've never you know trained them or tried to pull them on to into the art field. It has always been this grow on your own, find your own path, thoda bhot diro, thoda bhot patko, khun bun nikle achhe se, phir aage bado. So it's good. Smriti. It's good, always. In my case, what I work and what my child is not like, so in this way, I have to do it वो अब चीजों को अपनी ढंग से देख रहा है मुझे लगता नहीं है कि इससे कोई मेरे मैंने उसको कभी इस चीज के लिए बोला भी हो कि करना चाहिए या नहीं करना चाहिए उसने खुद चूज किया है कि उसे ये नहीं करना है तो वो उसकी संभावना बनी रहती है और ये ऐसा जरूरी नहीं है कि मैं पेंटिंग करूं तो वो वो ही करे और से इंस्पायर हो और उस तरह के काम करे बिल्कुल जरूरी नहीं है कई बार वो अपने माँबाप को बिल्कुल पसंद नहीं करते मेरे किस मतलब जो काम आप कर रहे हैं उनको उनसे अलग बनना होता है। I think there's a judgment here, yeah. No, I think he's he's been asking for a while. Why don't you give him the काफी तरफ काफी समय से वो So the question is open to all of you. So I mean to ask you that do you think that movement of feminism has contributed in the current upheaval of women or in any art form that you guys do? Do you, how do you think it's necessary or you or do you think it's used in a derogatory manner nowadays? Is it clear to you? Can you can you repeat that again? I mean to ask you that the movement of feminism mm -hmm. has contributed. How do you think has contributed to you in your art form or in the upheaval of women? How do you think it's necessary, or do you think nowadays it's used in a derogatory manner, or not how the how it meant to be? Okay, understood. Well, I'm very much uh, tempted to ask you what is meant to be. Or so to make it more simpler, 
do you think the movement of feminism has helped you in your art form or has helped you in your upheaval of your journey do you how do you think it's necessary for you or for everyone what were you influenced by feminism did you help did it help you in any I, manner I in your journey i haven't been affected by it at all because i like i said earlier that i you know kind of born in a family where i never mm. experienced the, any of that there was n there was no feminism there was no chauvinism mm. so um so i don't think about that at all so none of you were affected by no, that no. i don't think wo isse kuch bhi effect padta hai ya isse kuch growth hoti hai ya kuch in the current times maybe because a lot of women just connected with that ideology so you think it's serving the purpose or it's not see the feminism of 60s is not the same feminism same of 2000s yeah. Yeah. you know it's very much very different uh it is no more what we were talking about probably or women were talking when they were of course it is a, a very continuous path maybe uh, my work is not very directly connected to it or influenced by it but i cannot deny i cannot deny that the woman has been as a physical form has been sidelined and patriarchy rules and how patriarchy can came about or what all it does affect me it, it it's not that it doesn't bother me it does affect me i may be privileged but there are many more i'm not a political person but at the same time it does bother me uh, but i don't know where it comes in my art i have not seen my art getting influenced or uh, sort of giving any messages Uh, i don't consider myself a uh, artist who is an activist artist so it really doesn't come but as a human as a person as a person living in this society it does bother me and but i, 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 I think affected. we all we all resonate the same yeah, i think i i am affected yeah. by so basically uh, my my question is about visual imagery and as i see on the screen there there's a very powerful kali i followed a lot of seema's work i followed a lot of smriti's work it's very powerful there's this there's this woman which embodies shakti if you look at a lot of the male artists that you see currently the woman is demio she's coy she's beautiful she's a muse do you see a distinct difference in the visual language of women artists portraying shakti are we only women thinking of the shakti or the men thinking of it at all do you see a difference mujhe lagta hai ki female abhi apni space banane ki koshish kar rahi hai apni baat kehne ki ye baat abhi abhi shuru hui hai isliye soch rahe hain filhal correct nahi hame hame hamari baat kehne ki ka space abhi mil raha hai मतलब हमें अभी अपनी बात कहने का एक ऐसा माहौल है जहाँ पे कही जा सकती है क्योंकि बहुत दिनों से वो बातें नहीं कही गई हैं इसलिए वो औरतें अपने बारे में ही अभी क्योंकि अभी अभी उन लोगों ने बाहर निकलना चालू किया है समय लगेगा समय लगेगा उनको एक मेल की तरह एक कॉमनली सोचने में और बिहेव करने में actually i don't look uh, at art as a male or a female who has done it actually I, i don't really and i don't look at myself as a woman artist actually there is a little difference so i don't think i can answer this question <laughs> <laughs> i look at myself as an artist uh, okay. an artist who is doing a certain concept and that concept resonates with my inner feelings inner desires or my interpretation of the world as i see it so i really don't uh, want to say that men see women as this and because you cannot generalize uh, there are a lot of men uh, i think the way they have portrayed women in various different creative forms uh it is amazing because a man is not um, just by the outer garb i do not see that right. i see the feminine in every 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 
being so it becomes very difficult for me to generalize and say well this is a male drawing and this is a female drawing and this is mm. somebody because a lot of my uh, paintings if you will see where there is a male figure it is also got so many fe feminine attributes uh, you know so a lot of men would have a lot of problem with my <laughs> portraying them there <laughs> so I, I don't know uh, I, I would probably see it uh, just as a as an artwork, more yeah. like an artwork. Well, well said. So I think uh, we don't have enough time. I think all of you can come and ask the questions at your personal level later on. Uh, I think Asad has a few Thank words you. to uh, say. Thank you to this panel. I, I do apologize, me standing. I feel I was in a high school and having being on a curfew, but we do have a curfew to vacate this building by 8 o'clock. Okay. So we've already broken it and I'm going to be in trouble. No, I'm just kidding. But thank you to our panel for uh, for this wonderful discussion. I wish we could have gone on longer. Um, and to our partners, I've already mentioned them, so I'm going to save some time. Stay safe and remember that learning never stops. Thank you very much. Thank you.